Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this installment of the Corbel webinar series. Today, we are very pleased to have with us Jess Jord Grewal from BBMRI ERIC to present the BBMRI ERIC LC Help Desk Personalizing LC Support. My name is Christiane Haug. I'm stepping in for Vera Matzer today. I'm involved in Corbel on behalf of the Leibniz Institute DSNZ in Braunschweig, Germany. And I will be hosting the webinar today, and I'll also be leading the question and answer session. Before I introduce our speaker, I would like to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded, including the question and answer session at the end. And the webinar will be made available on the Corbel YouTube channel and our website, including a link to the slides. We have reserved some time at the end of the session for question and discussion. I would like to ask you to write your question in the question function of the GoToWebinar control panel, as you can see it here on this slide. And we'll go through the questions at the end. Now, I would like to briefly introduce the Corbel project to you. Corbel is a Horizon 2020 funded project bringing together 13 research infrastructures in the biomedical science. Corbell aims to transform the understanding of biological mechanisms and help to translate them into medical care. Modern biological and biomedical research involves complex projects, and they often combine a variety of different technologies and operate at the interface between different disciplines. And Corbell aims to support these complex interdisciplinary projects by, by harmonizing access and services for research involving more than one of the research infrastructures. For example, um, and uh, they offer access, for example, to biological and medical technologies, biological samples, or data services. Now, our presenter today is Jess Jord Grebel. She um, works at BBMRI ERIC. She joined BBMRI ERIC as the LC Help Desk Coordinator in August 2017. And before this, she worked as a research fellow in biolaw at the Center for Ethics and Law in the Life Science in Hanover. And there she investigated ethical, legal, and societal, so societal issues, or so LC, in the context of various European and international scientific projects, including biobanking collaborations. Jess Short is a lawyer by training, and she qualified as solicitor in England and Wales in 2010 with a niche health and social care law firm. And at this point, I will hand over to Jess Short. Um, well, firstly, thank you very much for having me here and for the lovely introduction, Christiana, and um, for everyone attending. I hope this will be um, an informative webinar. Um, I have to say that I'm recovering slightly from being ill, so if I do have a coughing attack, I will try to mute myself immediately and spare you from being tortured. So um, just to um, begin, um, I'd just like to start by giving a very brief um, overview of the services that we have on offer here at BBMI Eric and really use this webinar as a platform um, to share what these services are, um, how they're implemented and how they function and what's going on behind the scenes and just briefly touch upon um, what we hope to be offering in the near future um, and by giving some focus and um, focal areas. And um, I should also mention that our aim at the end of the day is to personalize the support um, and our services as much as we can and to have the end user in mind. And for us, this obviously includes researchers and biobankers, but it, it's also for research infrastructures in the biomedical science field. So you can see here that we've got three services um, currently being offered. Um, we have the LC Knowledge Base, the Help Desk, and the Ethics Check. And through each of these services, um, our objective is to 
provide assistance and support and really to facilitate compliance with um, regulatory and best practice standards. So I'll go through um, each of these um, services in detail. Um, but before I do that, I just want to show um, how these services, mainly the first and the second one, fit together and how they actually feed into each other. So, right. Um, you'll see at the bottom of um, the diagram that we have our Rockstar LCT members and our experts. And um, for those who are not familiar with our setup, um, essentially the team comprises of LC experts coming from across Europe, um, from our member and observer countries. Um, and we have lawyers, ethicists and social scientists. And these experts are very much at the core of the services that we provide um, here at Bibi and My Eric. And they're the ones, I have to say, doing the hard work um, and putting together the useful documents, which end up in the knowledge base. So you can see um, on the left hand side, um, they move up to the knowledge base, which is at the top. And um, the other thing that the experts are there for. Um, is to provide their expertise and their opinion and prepare responses um, coming um, from the LC help desk, which we have in the middle. So just by way of a very, very brief summary, um, and to give you an idea of what the knowledge base and the help desk are before I delve into them, um, the knowledge base is essentially a store, a platform of generic information um, regarding LC topics, relevant LC topics, I should say, which the users can help themselves to. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's the experts who are creating the content here. Um, then we have the help desk, and this is a more tailored support service um, where the experts are providing um, individual responses to inquiries coming in um, and that tends to be mainly regarding regulatory issues but of course ethical issues as well. So what I can do now is I can give you um, a very brief snippet of what the um, LC knowledge base looks like. Um, essentially as I mentioned it's an open access resource, resource platform um, the website is here. Please do feel free to browse around. Um, and this is where the practical well, and hopefully very inf um, uh, helpful information um, is stored. So one of the things that we have at the moment is the library and um, where we store all of our documentation. Um, it includes um, position papers in relation and responses to public consultations, reports. We have um, a template for an access policy as well as an M um, MTA and DTA. Um, and once again, I would just encourage you to have a peruse through it. Um, it also has FAQs on the GDPR, which um, I would definitely urge you to have a look at if you haven't done so already or to share with your colleagues, particularly if they do have questions um, about the GDPR. Um, and you can see at the bottom that it also contains um, some videos and actually some webinars. So let's move across. Um, the webinar series is a very is a, a recently um, new venture for us. Um, we've only had two um, for the moment, um, and surprise, surprise, they have been on the GDPR because it is such a hot topic. Um, the first one, which you can see here, is um, it, it just gives an overview of the GDPR in the context of health research. And the second one we had more recently um, in June focuses on anonymization and pseudonymization. Um, and this will be uploaded in due course. And the format of the webinar series is very much like this one, um, where there's also a Q&A session that follows regarding the particular topic. So we're taking a break for the summer, as most people are, um, but we'll be um, commencing again in September. So um, 
there will be no doubt emails and tweets coming your way regarding this. And I just want to actually take um, a very quick um, moment to thank Corbell for the input and especially Vera Matza because she has um, given us some really good pointers as we move forward with our own webinar series. So um, this is how we've started. But there are, of course, as there always are, um, more things to do. And the knowledge base is very much um, an evolving platform and content will be uploaded and added over time. Um, the very next step and the next thing to come um, is going to be a glossary. Um, with key terms. And this is actually feeding in from the work that Bibi and my Eric has been doing in relation to the code of conduct um, for health research um, in the context of the GDPR. So we'll be having a glossary very soon. And also just to organize information into specific LC topics to make it more accessible and user friendly. And of course, the webinar series, um, which I mentioned just previously. Um, and I would say that our focus at the moment is very much on education and training and the knowledge base um, is the ideal platform to make sure that any information that we're generating is accessible by the community. Um, and in order to ensure um, that we're choosing to focus on the right content. We're trying to be very reflexive and um, really take the lead from the community and researchers who are asking questions and want specific information. And um, Vera mentioned the chat box. So if there are things that you feel you need information on, please do let us know. It's very helpful for us. Um, so either through webinars and also the LC Help Desk is another service that provides us with an idea of the direction um, that we should be going in as a research infrastructure. Which leads us very neatly um, onto the LC Help Desk. Um, this is a service that came about as an idea initially in 2016 and we've been working very hard um, to get this off the ground and make our processes more efficient, which I think we have done. Um, but essentially it's a support service um, and it does what it says on the tin. It's a help desk, we're there to help and it's free of charge um, to anyone involved in biobanking activities in the context um, of a project um, and has questions when it comes to LC matters. Um, it is for um, researchers or biobankers located in, um, sorry, and also uh, research infrastructures in member and observer countries. Um, so that would be the other thing. Um, and in terms of how it works, it's very simple. Um, please email us. Um, at this stage, all you need to do is to send us um, an email with your question and you'll get this very swanky um, confirmation on the left hand side. Um, in most cases, what we're finding at the moment is that we do need to come back to requesters and um, ask further questions and clarifications before we can respond adequately. So it would actually be very, very helpful for us um, before and or when you do send in a question that you include um, some basic information um, that can help to kind of orient us a tiny bit. And this would include a telephone number, um, an abstract for the project, if there is one, and any other information you think is relevant, including um, involvement of any non-EU partners, and if so, which ones. So um, I'm just going to give you an, just very briefly touch upon what's happening behind the scenes. Um, essentially to show you that we're trying to keep a hold and um, of your tracking of, um, of your request and make sure that it doesn't get lost into that vortex that we all, um, I think, know too well with our emails and really to keep it moving. Um, and this is where my role comes as an as a LC Help Desk coordinator to really stay on top, uh, on top of requests that are coming in. 
and to make sure that they get followed up on. And so one of the first actions that will actually take place is you'll probably get a phone call from me um, trying to pump as much information out as possible. Um, and of course, another thing that's important to us is quality and verification of our of our responses that we're giving <clears throat> through the LC help desk. And this is where our experts come in once again. They're kind of like rock stars. And um, we, at the beginning of the year, we set up a review board and um, they're coming together as a group on a monthly basis. Um, at this point, we haven't had so many requests um, that we need to meet more frequently than this. And um, to review and to discuss incoming questions and either to provide um, a response if that's possible or to seek further clarifications if I've missed that. And from those discussions, um, the response is then drafted and it's verified by the review board before it is sent back to the requester. Um, there have been instances in the past where we do put the requester directly in touch with a specific expert. Um, but this is this tends to be seldom and we'll be working more with the review board um, just because it does provide that verification process. Um, and just to give you an idea of our activities to date, um, we haven't received that many. Um, we've received over 20 so far. Um, and they've come from researchers, uh, students, project coordinators, and they've been mainly on the following topics. Um, no surprise, data protection is at the top once again. And um, we've also had requests for templates um, for in con informed consent forms, as well as access policies. Um, at times, we've also been asked to verify um, an informed consent form and provide input, which the team has done. And um, as I mentioned before, there is that demand for training and education. Um, hence our decision to focus on this. And um, lastly, another request that we have had is support when it comes to Horizon 2020 projects and specifically the, um, the mandatory L ethics self-assessment component. And here, you most of you will be more than familiar with what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, this comes from the European Commission, and they really do provide fantastic guidance about how to go about completing the ethics self-assessment when it comes to the proposals. And this is something that we recommend everyone to do, to go through the guidance um, before they complete um, the ethics table and the ethics section in their Horizon 2020 proposal. And what we're doing is providing a complementary um, service by way of um, a service called the Ethics Check. And it's a relatively new service um, in the form that we're offering it in. And it's offered during the application phase for Horizon 2020 projects, um, we, which obviously includes our experts, will essentially check and review the ethics self-assessment component of the proposal prior to the submission. And our aim is to make sure that you're um, ticking all the boxes, all the right boxes, and make sure that you're addressing all of the LC concerns um, within your project and that you're also prepared as much as possible for the ethics appraisal procedure during the evaluation process. And um, there is an eligibility criteria which is here. Yeah. So once again, um, the eligibility criteria is very broad. Um, it's available to any projects um, that have a transnational feature, um, involve biobanking, um, the reuse of um, existing samples and data, and that the participants, at least one participant or the resources are located in one member or observer country of BBMR ERIC. And there's 
21 in total and that's also that information is on our website um, and how you get in touch with us again very very simple um, please email us the same email address as I provided before um, if you could just let us know that it's for the ethics check that would be wonderful um, we do ask you to send some documentation to us um, that would be the full proposal uh, the ethics issue table, which is in part A of the proposal, and the ethics section, um, which is in part B of the proposal. And we ask, obviously, that you complete them um, before sending them in. And we, we would request that you get in touch with us at least three weeks prior to the deadline. Um, we have had cases where we have um, assisted um, two weeks or even a week um, before the deadline but we also can't make any promises um, and as you know it tends to be very hectic during the call season so um, and the last thing I should probably mention is um, that, that the ethics check is very much a verification process so um, we do try to make clear that we don't complete the ethics issue table or draft the ethics section on anyone's behalf um, but we do provide that review and verification um, process if you hand in all of the documentation and we will assist you through that process. And I should mention that many of our experts have been to the ethics training offered by the European Commission. In fact, I'll be going this week as well, so I'll be learning quite a bit. And um, the idea is then that they are very well versed in what the European Commission is looking for and expecting in their in the proposals when it comes to the ethics sections. So we really do want to help as much as we possibly can. Um, right. Um, I've mentioned um, the way forward. I, I mean, I'm just going over old ground a tiny bit, but um, our focus area is very much on training and education. And this will be done through the webinar series, um, but also face-to-face -face workshops, um, specifically um, in relation to the ethics check and completing um, the ethics section of proposals. So um, we do also, if there is a particular request for training or workshop, we please do get in touch. Um, we would be more than happy to see what we could do and to make it tailor-made. This shouldn't be an issue. Um, and you can contact us through the LC help desk again. And the idea, once again, is very much to um, create um, information and um, services that are sustainable and accessible and have the researchers and the biobanking community in mind. So on that note, um, I'd like to say thank you very much. Um, I suppose the seminar was short and sweet. Um, and I really hope that I've been able to share what we do here at BBMI Eric um, with regards to LC and um, give an overview of what services we have here and I'm happy to answer any questions about the service and um, services I've mentioned. Um, I would ask if you do have any specific ethical or legal questions to actually email the help desk because then it can really go through the verification process and um, provide you with better quality responses and the email is here. Um, and the last thing I should mention is that the LC desk is officially closed for the summer and um, we're still responding to requests. Um, but if there is a delay, please be patient with us um, and we'll be officially running um, again from August. So, yeah, that's it for today. And if you have any questions, please fire away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Desrod, for your presentation. And now the attendees are all invited to write their questions in the question function of the GoToWebinar control panel. While you write, I will start with the first question. Um, so what has the feedback been so far concerning the LC help desk? I mean, um, I mean, we haven't had so many uh, requests coming in. Um, but I would say so far the requesters have been pleased 
and um, they've been quite positive. Um, the other thing that we haven't done and we do want to do moving forward is to implement a satisfaction survey. And um, because we can imagine once we start promoting the LC help desk, um, there will be floods of inquiries coming in and this will give us a better indication of how we can um, improve our services. So I would say so far positive, um, but I think we can go about finding out in a more systematic way how everyone is responding to the service or finding the service so yes okay thank you there are a few questions from the sure. attendees yeah um one of them being is the lc help desk advice um or can the lc help desk advice be considered as legal advice yeah so um we had this we had a big discussion actually and we were really careful about this because the line is so blurry but we really do make it clear we have a disclaimer on our website um, and it's a thin line from time to time but we make it clear that we're not a law firm and we're not here to provide legal advice we're providing information and the idea we're helping you to help yourselves and if there is any action um, that's going to be taken that really um, a law firm um, they need to consult a legal practitioner. So that's how we have dealt with it. Okay, another question uh, from one of the attendees is, how do you plan to integrate the code of conduct? Yes, okay, so this is um, a separate thing that has been going on on the side. Most of you will be aware that the code of conduct is um, something that we have been coordinating as a research infrastructure. Um, in terms of the actual LC knowledge base, we're using information like, for example, the glossary that will be shifted towards the LC knowledge base as well. But it's also likely that we'll be giving training around data protection um, that really echoes what is being said in the code of conduct. So that's how I envisage um, the code of conduct and the LC knowledge base coming together in the first instance, to be honest. And um, a lot of the webinars I know have already focused on the GDPR, and I think they'll continue to do so, and especially when the code of conduct is out, I can imagine that um, there will be more questions and we'll try, as I mentioned before, to stay reflexive as possible and respond to um, questions that people have um, by providing webinars or training or updating the FAQs that we have on the GDPR. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is about the response time. Do you have a general idea of response time? Yeah, um, that's a good question. It really has varied. Um, the request tracking uh, system does actually uh, allow um, for you to monitor, you can close your request so you can really um, see how long it has taken. But more often than not, we need to go back and ask a number of questions. So I would say on average, it takes about a month if it's a substantial inquiry, um, because we are connecting and liaising with different experts um, during that process. Um, but other times it can be handled within a day or two. Um, and there have also been instances where um, it's taken months um, because of correspond delays in correspondence on either side. Um, but I would say on average about a month or so. And this is also something that is agreed upon um, or will be agreed upon within the LC um, help desk review board is that when uh, a require, an inquiry comes in, um, a deadline is set um, and we try and get the inquiry out, the response out, excuse me, as soon as possible and within that time frame. And if there is a problem, we do try and communicate it. But I would say so far, a month. Okay, and another question is about uh, e-learning. Do you yes. plan any, yeah, and do you plan any e-learning sessions additionally to the face-to-face -face sessions? Um, that's also um, a re really good question. Um, um this we i mean i think it really comes down to funding and resources as everything always does um this isn't something that we have delved into too deeply at the moment but i can imagine that it comes up 
and we choose to focus on it. But at the moment, I have to be honest, um, we're really just choosing to focus on putting together and building content for the LC knowledge base. And so far, we haven't come up with um, a, systematic, a systematic or a strategic plan to offer e-learning sessions. But if there is a demand for this, this is obviously the direction that we would um, explore. Mm -hmm. Another question. Um, will there be specific focus on specific countries in the e EU where the local pr data protection laws have not been updated yet? Um, that's another really good question. Um, so um, as you may know that we have our national nodes in place um, on a country level. And so anything that we're dealing with um, within BBMI Eric uh, on headquarters level, we really try and keep it um, the information um, as transnational um, and uh, as general as possible. But, and so when it comes to country specific issues, um, that is something that we work with the national nodes and we promote the fantastic work that they would that they're doing as well on um, a domestic level. So no, um, at this point, it won't focus on particular countries, um, but this is something that we would work with the national nodes on or they would do and we would promote their work. So yes. And if there are no questions now, um, I think we will close this webinar. I thank you very much, Jessota, for presenting here today at the LC Help Desk. And thank you very much, uh, all of you who attended the webinar, and also for asking your questions. Um, the Corbe webinar series will now be going on summer break, and we will resume in September. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely day. Bye.